So it finally happened. I crashed my drone. You know, I, I flown my drone in the UK. I flown my drone down in the Caribbean. I have flown my drone in Los Angeles. I've flown it across this country. I've flown it for gigs. I've flown it for fun. And then I finally crashed my drone when I was trying to film a bridge. Now, it's kind of like a metaphor for how 2021 was and how hopefully 2022 will be. My drone fell 75 feet. It basically broke all the propellers, but the gimbal was fine and it landed directly on its back in the snow a foot away from a raging river. And I was able to retrieve my drone. It's off of the repair and it should be ready tomorrow. What this kind of taught me is that we can never expect to expect anything, but we have to be able to roll with the idea of what comes next. And you know, on that note, let's talk about last year and let's talk about next year. And let's talk about how we can inspire each other to create, to fly and hopefully not crash, but ultimately to do what we love to do. Let's roll. So I think we all can agree that 2021 has, has been a year. It's, it's been a year of challenge. It's been a year of uncertainty, but ultimately it's been a year of growth. And, and for myself, it's, it's been a busy year. Uh, it's been a year of learning. It's been a year of adapting. It's been a year of challenging myself. And it's been a year of, of always looking forward. And this basically has been the, the new mantra which I live by when it comes to videography and this new love of filmmaking that I have. So in a nutshell, here is 2021. So the year started off basically with the success of the Messiah Complex. Now, I was very lucky to work with an incredible team at uh, Against the Grain Theatre and Toronto Symphony Orchestra with director Joel Ivany to essentially shoot the Ontario units of the Messiah Complex as well as edit the entire film. Now, never in a million years did I think that this project would be viewed well over a quarter of a million times by people all around the world to be reviewed by the New York Times and the LA Times and the BBC News. It, I never ever thought that would happen. And it, it was such an amazing experience, not only to create this and to work, to, to do videography in this particular love of industry that I have, but also to meet and to, to learn from and to work with all these other innovative filmmakers in the project. As you may know, Messiah Complex was a film that was shot across the country. So we had multiple film teams. We had film teams based in, in BC. We have film teams up in the Yukon, in, in the Northwest Territories, in Iqaluit. You know, we had film teams in the Maritimes and we were able to work with incredible filmmakers and learn for how they make film and how they create their filmmaking process. Now, for myself, this was invaluable experience. I had the chance to, to work with their material when I was editing this and to put it together to create this, this beautiful work, this, this work of collaboration and these difficult times. So after Messiah Complex, we were pretty much in the height of lockdown. And Angela and I thought, you know what? Let's create a short film. And she wrote an amazing piece entitled 400 Days Later. And this was the first short film that I created with a team of five people. Now it was myself, it was Eric, it was Scott Bell, our sound recordist, it was Angie, it was Madeline Leon, and Molly. So about five and a half with our dog. But we created a film based upon an artist's experience during the pandemic. And we wanted to showcase the struggle that the, uh, the artist in theater or on stage was going through as a result of lockdowns and shutdowns within the industry. And we shot this film. It was shot over a couple days, over roughly about, I'd say two or three months. And we had to shoot it in a condensed format because of restrictions. And, but after it was done, this, this 10 minute work, this little microcosm of, of our experience during the pandemic, you know, we put it out there on Film Freeway, and then we got into film festivals. Angela's incredible script and her acting was seen by people all around the world. We got into 13 different film festivals. Once we put it out there, it was, it was screened down in Burbank in California. It was it screened in, uh, in Bath in London at the Jane Austen Film Festival. It's, it's screened in Australia at the CFIF Festival. It was, filmed, it was screened in Canada too at the Hamilton International Film Festival. Like, incredible experience for the first experience that I ever made creating a short film. Now, you know, big shout out to Anne. She did incredible script work. She did incredible acting in that. So it was a collaboration, a husband and wife team, but it showed us that anything is possible if you have a dream. 
And, and from that project, the dream just kept growing. We, we, we got hired to work with Verite Films for the Governor General's Performing Arts Awards. And this was the first time I worked with a film production company that hired me essentially to shoot the Ontario segments of all the laureate winners for the Governor General's Performing Arts Awards. This is, this is the first time I worked with Catherine O'Hara, with, with Noah Reed, with uh, Linda Hamilton, Alexina Louie, all these incredible Canadian artists who were being recognized for their contributions. And it was also the first time I worked as a director of photography on a set that had 20 plus people. Now, if, if you went back to 2020, Never in a million years would I think that those opportunities or those experiences would come my way. From there, we had a chance to work with the Toronto Symphony Orchestra, working with Gustavo Yemeno in, the, in his introduction as the conductor at the Toronto Symphony Orchestra for their new season. We shot their Coming Home video. Uh, we worked with Thea Turtle, working with Alphonse in their new upcoming production next year. Amadeus Choir, shooting their videos in Scarborough, and a whole, whole host of different other narrative projects. And, and that has taught me many things and has also inspired me to keep going and hopefully inspire you to realize that this coming year, you can do anything. So if there's one thing that 2021 has taught me, it's to always expect the unexpected. Because to be honest, I have really no idea what 2022 is gonna have in store. It's, it's pretty much up in the air. And that is why it's so important that if there is something that you wanna do, you have to do it. Because around me here, I never thought that I would have the, the fortune of working in a studio with Eric. And there will be a studio tour coming up, I promise you. It just has to get some plants in here. But I never thought this would happen. And it goes to show that if you have a dream and if you have just the desire to try something, you have to run with that idea. Now, that doesn't have to be in filmmaking. It doesn't have to be in photography. It doesn't even have to be in the arts for that matter. It could be in anything that inspires you. If you want to do something, just start. And when you start, you will hit bumps in the road. You will have times where you don't know what's next, but then you keep going. You keep learning. You keep challenging yourself. You, you basically give yourself the opportunity to learn as much about the thing that inspires you the most. In my case, I just bombed hours of YouTube videos on filmmaking and editing and all that sort of stuff so that I could learn the gear, the specifics, the technicalities, the, the workflow in order to help myself get more efficient at creating the work that I do. And, and that can be the same for any vocation. I mean, that, as I said, doesn't have to be in the arts. It could be in anything that inspires you. Just try, because never in a million years did I think that I would be working here in a studio. And I think now is the time, because we've really reinvented ourselves when it comes to this you know, pandemic time. We've been, we've been not forced to, but we've had to accept the new challenges that our lives bring. And if there ever was a time that you had that idea sitting on a shelf, now is the time to pull it off the shelf and give it a shot. This is the thing about resolutions, because resolutions are very easy to make and they're very easy to follow for about two months, but they're also very easy to forget. And especially when it comes to filmmaking, in my case, you know, I spent hours diving into YouTube videos. I spent hours meeting people and, and learning the craft of observing filmmakers and artists and what they do. Because I didn't go to film school. I, I'm an opera singer. I went and did my bachelor's and master's of music out in UBC. If I was to go back to 2004 to 2000, I, I would never have thought that I'd be sitting here doing video talking to you about what can inspire you for next year. And that just goes to show that your path is never set straight. It goes off many different directions until it leads you of where you want to be. And I, I think that is something that you have to live by, especially now. It's very easy to, to not think in a positive light. It's very easy to think in a negative way. But when you have a goal in mind, set steps. I mean set realistic goals, but then push that bar a bit and push it to the next part and see where it goes. I mean, get organized, have the ability of being able to write down ideas, get a whiteboard, get a, get a notebook, all these things to, to write down thoughts. I mean, compared to other filmmakers and other directors of photography, I am a rookie. I'm, I'm still learning. I'm very green when it comes to this, but I have a thirst to learn more. And that can be for anything because once you get your, your, your feet wet in it and you get the experience of doing it, it's like a snowball. It will grow, it does. It might seem difficult at first, it might be challenging and impossible, 
But the more you try and the more you just don't give up, the more you will succeed. And that is why you have to make 2022 your year to do it. This is the year that you need to try. You need to try and you need to fail and you need to learn and you need to repeat and do it again over and over and over until you succeed and inspire yourself. Because when you inspire yourself, you will inspire so many other people and you will, you will learn things and meet people and have new experiences that you never thought you would have. I promise you, it's, it's there and it can be done. So until next time, I will catch you later.